Garm Paul, so hybrids are all the rage when it comes to SUVs and Kia is joining the fray here in Australia with a hybrid version of the Sportage. Now this is pretty exciting because you've got brands like Toyota that have massive weights at the moment for the RAV4 hybrid and people want a fuel efficient alternative that isn't going to take ages to get here. So hopefully this is the answer to that. Now today we're going to do a review on this. This is the entry level version of the Sportage Hybrid. It is the SX specification. It is priced at just under $46,000. Now it is a big step up from the front wheel drive SX uh, in regular internal combustion version. It's like over five grand more expensive. And then it's also a few grand more expensive than the uh, all wheel drive diesel SX version as well. So you are paying a bit of a premium premium for that. This competes with things like the Toyota RAV4 hybrid, the Honda CR-V hybrid, and also the Nissan X-Trail hybrid as well. So today we're going to do a bit of a brief look at this. We've already reviewed the Sportage in detail, so I'm going to link to that review in the comments section below. Today we're going to focus on the hybrid tech and how this drives compared to a regular Sportage. So if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this video, you can use the time codes that are on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we review a hybrid Kia. Let's have a quick zip around here of the outside of the Sportage. So visually, this doesn't look all that different to a non-hybrid version of the Sportage. So optional colors are gonna seat back just over $500. Really reasonable pricing. I do find it quite strange how some car companies are like $3,000 for an optional color or $2,000 and then some are $500. So anyway, uh, that is good news. In terms of the design, there is an update to this coming and we've seen spy photos of that getting about online, but I still think this is a pretty decent design. It hasn't sort of aged terribly, so that's definitely good news. You've got partial LED lights, so LED headlights, uh, incandescent indicator, and then LED daytime running lights. Uh, you've got the new Kia logo up the top there. I guess I've got to stop uh, calling this a new Kia logo. It's kind of been new now for a, a little while. Uh, piano black there on the grill, and then being white, it's sort of all pretty straightforward down the bottom there as well. Now around the side here, you've got yourself a set of 18 inch alloy wheels, Australian ride and handling tune for this vehicle as well. So should mean that it rides pretty nicely. Uh, wheel arch protection just there. Got an indicator built into the wing mirror. There is a GT line version of this, and that is also front wheel drive. That picks up a few extra bells and whistles. So uh, this is sort of pretty Spartan when it comes to features. And you'll see inside, it's even got cloth seats and stuff like that. So roof rails up the top, brushed chrome strip over here. Go around to the back with me. So around the back, you've got partial LED tail lights. The rest of that is uh, incandescent. HEV, so hybrid electric vehicle is what that stands for. And that's how you're gonna be able to tell this apart from the non-hybrid versions. Sportage badge there, and then a bit of black cladding along the bottom here as well. So let me know what you reckon about the design of the Sportage. Do you reckon it's aged well? And are you excited for the hybrid version of this? And what do you think about the pricing as well? Do you reckon it's too much of a step up? Let me know what you reckon in the comments section below. So we are inside the cabin here. Now, as a reminder, we've already done a detailed review of Sportage. So if you do want a little bit more detail than what we're about to go through now, there is a link in the description below to our uh, Sportage review. So today I'm just gonna touch on the highlights here. So uh, to me, in terms of the design, I think this is really nicely presented. You've got these two big screens here ahead of the driver. Now I say big screens, they're not technically screens. So this one here is your infotainment display at 12.3 inches, but this one here is a smaller digital display in the center. And then you've got digital uh, speedometer and tachometer. The rest is um, kind of like a 3D display. It is pretty cool, but it's not all a digital display like you get in the upper spec models. Um, on the infotainment front, this is all really easy to use. It's not the latest version of Kia's infotainment system that you're going to find on vehicles like the EV9 that has remote connectivity and that kind of stuff. This is just a more basic version. So there's less to worry about, I guess, in that sense. But you do get cool features like quiet mode, which only plays audio up the front here to keep it nice and quiet for the kids in the back there. You also, sorry about that annoying battery discharge warning that's just going to keep coming up. You got voice memo option there, along with inbuilt satellite navigation. You also have smartphone mirroring in the form of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those are wired, and uh, this is what they look like from our previous review. It just gives you an idea of what it looks like there on the display ahead of the driver. Six speaker sound system with AM, FM, and DAB digital radio as well. Now, in terms of uh, the rest of the cabin here, so nice and soft materials around the cabin. It does feel nice and premium, even though this is a big step 
step up in price over the entry-level SX non-hybrid version of this vehicle. It does actually feel quite nice here. There is a lot of piano black though. Have a look at that. All that bottom section there is piano black. So it doesn't really look amazing. You can see it's sort of marking already. It scratches pretty easily too. So it's just a material I wish they didn't use in cars anymore. But Anyway, it's there, <laughs> can't really do much about it. Uh, this section down the bottom here, I love that you can switch between the two different displays there. So you've got your radio and map menu, and then you press that button, and then it transforms into your climate control. And you've got dual zone automatic climate control there as well. Down the bottom here, in terms of connectivity, you have a USB-C, USB-A, and then a 12 volt outlet as well. Lots of storage too, two cup holders here that snap back into position. Decent sized center console there as well. Reasonably sized glove box down here. So it is a pretty sort of easy place to be seated. In terms of the seats, look, they are cloth. So it does add a little bit of cheapness to this. But at the end of the day, cloth is pretty breathable. So unless you're getting leather seats with cooling, I think cloth is a better option, especially for hot summer days. It'll just keep you nice and relaxed. Now, in terms of the second row, you've got plenty of knee room, toe room, and headroom. It's actually a really nice place to be seated. It is worth keeping in mind that they do two different wheelbase versions of this car. They share this platform as well with the Tucson. So there's a short wheelbase and a long wheelbase, and we get the long wheelbase version here in Australia. So that's why you get a little bit of leg room there in the second row. When it comes to boot space, so this has a space saver spare tire instead of a full-size spare, and cargo capacity comes in at 586 litres for the second row in place, and and then if you do drop the second row as well, it's just under 2,000 litres. So it's a really good family car in terms of space and what you're getting. Okay, so we are on the road in the Sportage Hybrid. Uh, typical Hyundai Kia stuff. I'm gonna switch off the uh, lane support stuff because here uh, on the right and handling track, it's a little bit intrusive. Uh, also switch off the speed detection stuff. Although I did notice, even though it has come up there reading the incorrect speed, it isn't beeping like it was in the last Hyundai and Kia that we drove. So I don't know what the go is here, but it seems to maybe have been resolved. Um, now, Sportage Hybrid, what is it like to drive? So you'll notice right now, our battery is almost full and we're running on EV. We've been running on EV pretty much since I started talking. So uh, it basically uses a mix of internal combustion and then it has a hybrid drivetrain as well with a really small battery. So the battery measures uh, just under one and a half kilowatt hours. And to put that into context, something like a Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, it's around 70 kilowatt hours. So it's only a tiny little battery, but it's only designed to do short, slower speeds with the engine switched off because when the engine is on, you're using a 1.6 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine, makes 132 kilowatts of power and a little over 250 newton meters of torque. Now that figure is actually pretty good because a lot of the other uh, hybrids in this segment are actually naturally aspirated. It means that they're really thrashy and don't really move all that quickly and they just aren't very pleasant to drive. Whereas this one really gets along and moves nicely when it is running, even when the battery is low. Now that's all mated to an electric motor that makes 44 kilowatts of power and 264 newton meters of torque. And when that whole thing is combined, you've got 169 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. And I know that I've just sprayed a whole bunch of numbers there at you, but um, they are the top level figures. That's all made into a six speed automatic transmission. Now, what does all that feel like behind the wheel? I'm gonna give this a little kick now. Wow, it's actually really punchy. It sort of slaps you right in the back and pushes you along nicely. Uh, the thing I did notice though, is it can be a little bit laggy there because again, this is just a nuance of the, on the way that this system works, but depending on the hybrid system, it will have access to the torque from the electric motor before the gearbox is engaged. Whereas some of these systems where you've got an electric motor in line with the gearbox, you have to wait until the gearbox is in the gear that it's ready for. And it's the same story here. So when I go to punch it, there is a delay before the engine flicks on it gets into gear and then it starts delivering torque. So uh, not the end of the world, but just something worth noting. Hyundai claims a fuel economy of about five liters per 100 Ks, which is an incredible figure for a vehicle this size. We've actually been averaging around five and a half and that figure to me is really impressive. So that's a mix of highway and a little bit of city driving as well. I mean, that to me is a fantastic figure. The only sort of downside to all of this is you actually also get fantastic fuel economy out of the diesel as well. And that is a cheaper alternative and comes with all wheel drive in comparison to this hybrid in this exact same spec. Righto, sine wave time. I'm gonna jack the speed up to 130 here. See what the 
this Portage is like on our sine waves. It's just uh, maximum speed in Australia gives you an idea of what it's like to drive a vehicle like this in the country, where you might get this type of continuous undulation. It's actually not too bad. So it's softly sprung, but they have a decent level of body control there, which means that it is quite satisfying to drive. And even on that type of undulating surface, you still feel like you're in charge of the vehicle. It doesn't feel like it's going to spit you out at any moment. So that's uh, that's actually a pretty impressive setup. In terms of road noise, it's actually pretty quiet inside the cabin. There's a decent amount of profile on those tyres, so you don't get a huge amount of tyre noise in the cabin. Uh, this is how it went up against our calibrated sound meter. If you do want to see how this compares to other cars that we've tested before, we'll look at the link in the description below. Now, what about your visibility? So I can see clearly down the front there, wing mirrors are really nice and big with a blind spot monitor built in. Visibility out the back is excellent too, so it's all pretty straightforward. And then you've got the front and rear parking sensors as well. Now, what's it like in terms of your drive modes and sportiness? Well, you've got Eco, Sport and Smart. I'm going to stick it in Sport. We'll go for a nip around the track and just see what it's like. It's actually really punchy. Normally, hybrids in this segment are nowhere near as engaging as this is to drive. Yeah, tyres aren't fantastic, but this actually has a lot of punch. And considering it's just a front wheel drive car, it's actually holding on really nicely. And it is piling on speed remarkably well. So they've done a, they've done a really good job with this system, which uh, to me, I wasn't expecting. I thought hybrid, it's probably gonna be a little bit underwhelming in terms of how it performs, but we're getting along pretty nicely. Steering feel is good. And I love the eagerness and punchiness. Even when the battery gets low, you do find sometimes in these vehicles when the battery is low that you're relying on the internal combustion engine to do all the heavy lifting. But in this instance here, the internal combustion engine is actually pretty good. So you are getting a decent bit of throttle response there. We'll just roll onto the throttle on the back straight here. Yeah, that is hoofing along really nicely. Very impressed with that. Nice one, Cam. Okay, bumpy road time. Slot this over to Eco. Do this at 90 k's an hour. I want to see what the Sportage is like when we attack this terrible quality road. Okay, so 80, 90 k's an hour. It is sucking up these bumps beautifully. You know, this is the big benefit you get out of local ride and handling tune. Here's our condensed sine wave. Tiny bit floaty over that, but. Uh, the ride quality is fantastic. They've done an excellent job with that. Okay, time to do a bit of performance testing. I'm going to tell you about Help Me Car Expert first. So, Car Expert is big Australian website, and uh, we have stacks of reviews, stacks of comparisons. We can also connect you with a dealer who can get you a better deal, hopefully, on a new car. So, just go to Google, type in Help Me Car Expert, and it will take you to our website. Alrighty, so I'm going to whack this over into sport mode. I'm going to turn traction control off because I reckon <laughs> we're going to come to grief with traction potentially given how peppy this thing is. Uh, we're going to go all the way through to 120 as well. So uh, here we go. Okay, it's really strong off the line there. Okay, 100. And there's 120, all righty, let's have a look at how we went. Zero to 100 in 7.67 seconds, which I think is actually pretty good for a hybrid. Uh, and then 80 to 120 in 4.93, so it's got a nice strong mid-range as well. So both pretty decent figures in my opinion. Okay, so break from 100-ish kilometers an hour. Let's dial that up now and see what the brake and tire package is like. Here we go. So, 100 to 0, 2.95 seconds, 39.82 metres. So, okay, uh, not sort of amazing and not terrible either. If you do want to see how this has gone compared to other vehicles, both in terms of acceleration and braking, have a look at the link in the description below. Now, <laughs> how quick does it go in reverse? Let's have a little look. Here we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. 70 kilometers an hour. That is impressive. 
Okay, so Kia Sportage Hybrid. What do we reckon? Um, this was actually way better than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, the sticker price kind of has a bit of shock value to it, but if you look at this more than just a hybrid, it is actually a really sporty, fun car to drive. So they've added that element of zestiness that goes beyond this, just sipping only a little bit of fuel. So it does feel considerably different to what they have on offer with X-Trail, uh, CRV, and even RAV4 hybrid as well. So um, yeah, I'm keen to see what you think. Do you think it is too expensive? Let me know in the comments section below. Would you go for the diesel instead? I'm kind of interested to see where people are at. Are they done with diesel? Do they want to go towards hybrid? I'm keen for your thoughts. So let me know in the comments section below. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.